everybody. It is Dean Z speaking to you from my favorite file reading chair. Uh, I'm going to go through another application today. I'm going to call this applicant Johnny. And I am going to start, as I did with my last applicant, Twyla, I'm going to start with the resume because I love that brief 30,000 foot view of this person's whole story. Okay. First thing I note is education right there at the top tells me this person just graduated from the University of Michigan, heard of it, uh, with a BA in a liberal arts field, graduating in May 2020, so they are what some people call K through JD or straight sevens. I don't, I don't actually use either of them, but wanted to pass them on. Anyway, this person uh, tells me they have a cumulative GPA uh, University of Michigan of 3.66. I do not need to know that. That information is covered in great deal detail elsewhere in the application, so save yourself one line and leave that off. I also note that this person tells me they are living in Ann Arbor. Don't give me a, a permanent address, which is fine. They, they don't need to, because uh, again, that will be elsewhere in the application. Uh, but it tells me they're living in Ann Arbor, so maybe they are a Michigan resident, Maybe not, as I mentioned in my last episode, of course, uh, we are a public university, so being a resident of Michigan is a small positive factor in our process. So little note to self that I should double check that when I'm going through other places, parts of the application. Okay, moving right along. Next section after education tells me this person got some awards, um, just blah, 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 scholarships. I'm gonna guess these are uh, awards either, one is definitely something, um, I can tell from the timing on it, that he got as an incoming student to the university, the other is something they got after, he got after his first year. Um, doesn't tell me any criteria for these. Not necessary, but it, you know, if you have some kind of award or scholarship that has particular criteria, that's the kind of thing I'm curious about, you know, just so I can assess exactly how amazing you are. Um, so, you know, little, that little detail could be useful. Um, I will say this application, or this resume rather, is very easy to follow. Um, a nice format, decent sized font, not too smushed together. So I think that has been handled well. Next, we start with the experience. Um, and this person, I can tell, has done a quite a number of jobs for someone who is just graduating from college. So they have definitely made the most of their time. I'm often asked about like if it's an advantage to, you know, take time to work uh, from the admissions standpoint. And the answer, frankly, is often yes, because it just gives us more to look at. You know, you've done more with your life, more things for us to take into account. Uh, but if you're gonna come straight through from undergrad and you have, like I say, with this candidate, really made the most of all your time, you're fine. So um, this person was an intern for a, a Michigan, a US representative from the state of Michigan uh, for one summer, worked in as an office assistant in a law school administrative office. I wonder if that is how I managed to uh, make this person let me review their application for all the world to see. Who knows? Anyway, worked for an office in the law school, uh, was an investigator for a uh, public defender's office. It's pretty cool. Worked for another law firm. Um, told me a little bit about what they did for that law firm, would have preferred a sentence maybe about what kind of firm this is overall, because it's a bit, it's clearly a very small firm that I've never heard of. So um, as I'm, you know, it's nice to just get some idea of what that firm might do as a general proposition. And I can see they, they tutored for, um, tutored adults in uh, math and English for helping them get their G GED. Love to see that. Uh, I will notice there is a stray comma next to that entry. And guess what? I don't care. Stray commas 
are not anything to lose sleep over. I mean, of course, you're applying to law school, so you're probably a crazed perfectionist. Um, so you'll, you'll try to avoid that kind of thing. But if after you submit your application, you see that stray comma, it's fine. Don't worry. And, and they also worked as a research assistant in a, um, a project having to do with a uh, prison. And I don't want to go into too much detail to keep this person anonymous, but that all looks very interesting to me. So my assessment, just from glancing at it, that there was a lot on here and they made the most, most of their time, that is holding up as I look at the details. Okay, next section on the resume, they have titled Leadership and Campus Involvement. And it tells me about two roles this person had in a pre-law group. Uh, the University of Michigan has, at last count, approximately eight kajillion pre-law groups. So I am not betraying this person's anonymity by saying that. Um, but I will say they have broken it up into like two different entries because they were president at one point and held another position at another point. Um, I would just make that maybe one entry um, and, you know, show both positions, but not make it into two different entries just because it's like it's all one group and it sort of makes it a little bit like you're trying to pad things when you break it into two. But that is a extremely minor criticism. But I, I have to find something to say here, right? Okay. Uh, and then uh, also this person tutored. Oh, I see. I was going to say why, this person also tutored uh, fifth and sixth graders. Um, and I was confused about why they would put the tutoring here and they put other tutoring elsewhere. And it's because this is, it looks like a, a university uh, organization that they were tutoring with. So they have divided that up. You know, that's one of the tricky things about your resume. Like you have to figure out some way to organize them, organize all these things. Um, I feel like tutoring is tutoring. It doesn't really matter to me what the overarching organization is that, you know, you're tutoring for. I mean, I, I like that to know that this is fifth and sixth graders versus adult learners, but I don't care that it was sponsored by the campus or sponsored by some other organization. So we do you, you know, it's this is, again, this is not something that is going to be a problem for this person's application, but just you need to be thinking about what, what is the most logical way to group all this information together. Okay, next they tell me um, they have Spanish language proficiency. Uh, that is fine, I know that is, uh, something that many people include on the resume. We actually ask about it elsewhere in the application. Um, so you wouldn't have to put it on your resume, but in the interest of not doing a separate resume for every single school you're applying for, I think that's fine. But at the very end, uh, they list three references. Never bother putting references on your law school resume. Absolutely unnecessary. Um, you know, you've got letters of rec that are coming in as part of your application. These references add nothing. So, um, yeah, save yourself a little space. And if he hadn't done that, he could have given me uh, an interest section, which I think I've made very clear by now. I really love those interest sections. Okay, but this is a very good resume overall. Well done. Okay, next I'm going to turn to the law school report that I get from the Law School Admissions Council. Um, at a glance, tells me stuff that I already know, University of Michigan, liberal arts major, graduate 2020, um, tells me a little bit about the University of Michigan and, and how people do on the LSAT there, and um, a little bit uh, about uh, the way the GPAs get distributed. Um, I will say, uh, 14% score in the top five percentile of the LSAT uh, at University of Michigan. So that is really strong, uh, but it also looks like there's a little bit of grade inflation at Michigan compared to uh, Wisconsin anyway, which we saw last week. Um, not a lot, just a snitch. 
GPA college mean at Michigan is 3.49. Okay, this also breaks up year by year how this person has done extremely consistent. Like every semester has almost the exact same GPA. 3.67, 3.62, 3.76, 3.65, 3 for an overall cumulative GPA of 3.67. And because he's only ever attended one institution of uh, higher ed, it is also his degree GPA. So extremely consistent grades, um, obviously quite good grades. It's roughly an A minus average. Um, yeah, this would not be um, a transcript that I look closely at because um, I'm not, there's nothing in here to give me any grave concern uh, based on what I can see from the Law School Admissions Council report. Uh, this person has only taken the LSAT one time. They got a 167, that's the 94th percentile. Great. Uh, the next thing that is in here is a little notice from the Law School Admissions Council uh, reminding everybody that uh, COVID-19 happened last semester, in the last semester of this person's time in college, and that it was terrible, and that some places went to mandatory pass-fail and so forth. And since they said that, maybe I'll take a quick peek just to see what this person's last semester grades look like, but otherwise I probably wouldn't have bothered looking at the transcript. Before I get to the transcript, though, I will say here is the LSAT writing prompt. Um, I love that this is now typed so that if I want to look at it, I can. This happens to be another section that I do not tend to pay a lot of attention to unless I have some reason to want to look closely at this person's writing ability uh, because maybe their writing elsewhere seems either amazingly good and I am wowed by it and I want to make sure that they write as well um, sort of in on a short time frame as they do when they have a lot of time to work on it or if their writing seems worrisome and I want to see how do they do under a time pressure um, undertaking. This one I see nothing jumping out at me in terms of weird language usage or anything else so I'm not going to take a lot of time looking at that. Okay here's the transcript now. Let's just turn to that last semester and the University of Michigan also has a little note here saying during this term a global pandemic required significant changes to course delivery most courses adopted mandatory alternate grading though students could opt to have traditional grading this person opted for traditional grading because they got three A's so I would have I would have wanted traditional grading too in that circumstance um that's just interesting but if they had gone past fail, that would not have been held against them. Okay, I'm going to return to that because that's where the letters of rec are too. So um, I like to look at those at the end though. Very last thing. Okay, here is the application itself where you answer all these questions about like your where you went to high school and what your address is. And this tells me, oh, parents are in Michigan and high school in Michigan. And he has checked the box that says he is a Michigan resident. So that is mystery now laid to rest. Definitely a Michigan resident. Um, also want to note, where did that go? I know my application. I really do. Okay, here is the page where we ask... Um, Nope. Here is the page where we ask if you have any um, language abilities. And this person says Spanish elementary conversational proficiency. Which I guess he means he has a little bit of Spanish. So not a lot. Nothing much to take into account there. Um, also want to note though, on this page we ask if anyone in your immediate family is a graduate of Michigan Law School, let us know. And he says his grandparent, grandfather, uh, was a graduate. So you know what I do with that information? Really nothing. If I were to admit him, I would let the um, 
alumni development office now. Um, but that is not a factor in our process. Um, all right, so not much more to look at here. Let us move on to the personal statement. Okay, this is a pretty good personal statement. Um, I would say A plus for topic and A minus for execution maybe. Uh, so the topic has to do with this person's leadership role in the uh, pre-law organization that I mentioned earlier. And it is talking about a member of the organization um, who he finds out um, through another member, um, he is told that there have been sexual assault allegations against another member. And this is the story of how he handled learning of that. Um, and it is A plus for bravery, because this is obviously a um, timely topic, like we care a lot about um, sexual misconduct and uh, it is, you know, in the law and certainly on campuses. Uh, but it is a challenging topic to handle well. So, especially from the point of view of um, an outside observer, I mean, it's one thing if you're telling your own story of sexual assault, it's something else if you're talking about uh, how you navigate uh, the, someone else's story of sexual assault or you know a, a member who has been accused of sexual assault. There's a lot of landmines there. I, and I think he does a good job. But I, my advice to you, if you want to do this, is have at least three harshly critical friends look at it and make sure that you haven't said anything um, that is insensitive or that is really stepping in it because there are so many different places where you could do this when you're handling this topic. So you want to really have been thoughtful about this and, um, and make sure you're being sensitive because this is a topic where if you handle it poorly, uh, you could give a reader grave offense, you know? And, and that's something that, you know, we, we try not to have our personal feelings play into our evaluation of applications. I think that's an extremely important value, but people are human. So you need to think about that. All right. So, it's a very interesting story for me. He is very honest with his feelings of worry that he has when this story comes to him and he realizes he's the person who's gonna to have to figure out how to handle it and figure out what to do with this new member who is, has sexual assault allegations against him. How uncomfortable he feels with the whole thing. Uh, and so I really get a sense of this guy's personality and frankly he seems very sweet and um gentle and it I, I love how much uncertainty he is willing to share about uh about himself right i think that is very endearing um so he talks about how he brings uh the person in to talk to him and uh and says and, and learns that um he brings the person in to talk to him and the person tells him they won't be able to find anything, which understandably does nothing to allay his concerns. So then he um, has another member of uh, the group come forward and, and echo the concerns before he's gotten any further in this process. And so now he's like the level of um, anxiety for him has been kicked up. And um, then he has another conversation with the member and I, I won't go into detail, but he says he found the conversation disturbing and alarming. And um, then he describes, the applicant describes the many steps he went through to try to figure out what was he supposed to do in this circumstance, right? What is he legally required to do? 
what ESC uh, legally permitted to do, and how there is sort of a, a paucity of guidance for people in, in leadership positions in, in groups like this. Um, and he is, you know, he's exercising his due diligence, but it is not easy. I loved that part too. This tells me um, how seriously he was taking it. And, you know, his, his, he's not just going with his gut. You know, he is, he's trying to make sure he's following the proper process. And finally, it ends with him uh, telling the member, you are out, we have voted and you are out. And he, the, the member sort of harangues him, like, tell me more. And uh, he, he doesn't, he does not do that for uh, reasons that are uh, smart. Like he, he realized he, he can't say anything without um, uh, compromising the anonymity of the people who confided in him. Uh, and he talks about how hard it was not to sort of justify himself to this guy. So um, I really thought he did a very good job on this. Um, but uh, in, in, in this very self-reflective. Um, so I liked it. I will note that at the very end, he talks about studying at the University of Michigan School of Law. That is not the name of our school. It's law school, University of Michigan Law School. So, okay, not a big problem, but uh, do try to get the name of the school right. Uh, but all in all, this, this personal statement leaves me with positive impressions. Okay, so last thing we want to look at are the letters of recommendation. Okay. Okay, so the first one here is from a, a professor um, in his major. It is a two-page letter. It is uh, pretty detailed. It is uh, favorable. He took two classes with this professor. Um, and she, she, the professor, clearly feels that she knows him well. And she talks about his academic abilities. Um, she says she thinks he will be an excellent law student. Um, and she talks about how he gets along with his peers in the classroom. These are all things that we care a lot about. The next letter is from his employer. And that is a briefer letter. It's one page, but it is very positive. He worked there uh, for a summer and they clearly think well of him. Um, helpful, I've actually, I, it's good. It tells me this person's had, um, you know, work experience in a professional setting. It's helpful to see. Um, he, you know, he's between the pre-law and, and, and this job, like he's at least thought uh, pretty much about whether he wants to go to law school, whether this is the right step, which is of course, when you are coming straight from undergrad, that's one of the things we'll want to make sure of, right? If you if you're coming after several years of working, sort of there is a default assumption that you have been thinking carefully about whether to go to law school, um, and if you're coming right from undergrad, you know I, th that is not the default assumption. Um, it's nice to see that someone has put some work in um, to check out this career, um, and they have. So. All in all here, I would say this person is a probable admit. On the whole, I would say, with the exception of the fact that this person did not write any of our optional essays, which I would have liked to see, just get one more example of their writing, just a little bit more information about who they are as a human being. Um, with the exception of that, they did everything right. So I'd put them in the presumptive admit pile. You might want to see what the rest of the pool is looking like. Uh, but I, I think this person's chances are pretty good that at the end of the day, they would get an offer from us. Um, okay. Thank you very much for watching.